Frankie, many, many congratulations. Thank you. Your first Royal Ascot winner. Yes, it was a great thrill. I had a dream run on the rail and uh, you done it very nicely. One in the bag. Let's hope there's some more to come. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful, sweet performance, this. The crowd giving a tremendous cheer. A devastating win. Frankie the Tory, the Ascot specialist, the hero of Ascot. Ooster, daddy, we done it, mummy. 35 years on from his first Royal Ascot and 77 wins better off, the flying, dismounting, cheeky grinning, plane crash surviving three-time champion jockey is preparing for his final rides at the Royal Meeting before retiring at the end of the year. Frankie de Torre, a moment of joy for him as he passes the post. One of the most revered and respected riders of his generation, and with a trophy hall that could fill most people's houses ten times over. Frankie has a near mythical relationship with the world's most famous race meeting. Memorable wins and losses, astronomic highs and devastating lows. 2023 will be the last time he boards that emotional roller coaster. It will be tough. The last day be sad. For sure I will cry. I'm Jason Weaver, ex-jockey, one-time Royal Ascot Gold Cup winner and close friend of my old mate, Lanfranco Frankie de Torre. Frankie de Torre and the Royal Meeting for the last time. It's going to be incredibly strange that week. His career has been unbelievable, really, hasn't it? We were kids mucking out horses. He's the best jockey the world has ever seen. Seems remarkable. Hey! How are you, stranger? Hello, Jace. You all right? All right champion. You're going to wing me round the stables? Yeah, absolutely, yes. I want you to tell me about the early days at Royal Ascot. Well, the first ride I've had, I was made up, so I told Lucas, look, I've got a, my first ride at Royal Ascot. And he said, oh, well done, which race? I went, the Royal Unka. I the said, Royal Hunka. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He had the Royal Hunka, the big Hunka. No, the Royal Hunt Cup. <laughs> so that was my first ride. But the one which sticks to mind, obviously, your first winner. And there was uh, Michael Distinction. So it was a big deal. It was the Queen Anne, first race of the meeting. And he was a rocket. I watched the replay of the race you know, after 30 years. I mean, I had nerves of steel. I don't know because I was naive or stupid, but I sat behind yeah. the wall of horses and I, and I, got, I got a gap on his side and I took it. I won. And here comes Mark of Distinction and Frankie de Torre to come and storm into the lead on the near side. Mark of Distinction taking it up now as they race towards the line. It's Mark of Distinction who's going to win it from Mirror Black at the line. Mark Your first win at Royal Ask, of course, you're not going to forget. At the time, I was riding for Luca, but I was also riding for Ian Boulding. Ian Boulding, black top hatted to the right, obviously very proud. He had a few for the Queen, so it was a great honour to ride for her. When Lord Carnarvon came to see me, he looked like he was seven foot tall, especially with the big tall hat. And he looked down on me and said, uh, right boy, do you know how to address the Queen? I went, no sir! <laughs> so he said, yeah, you're going to bow and tip your hat and you don't speak to her until she speaks to you and yes ma'am okay whatever so off i went for my first ride and she was there and she never said a word so i'm like your majesty i was fine so the second day that's on the wednesday i'm riding for her again i went to go to the paddock she said what's the going like it's good to fur ma'am i nailed this it's Saturday, and usually you can tell when the Queen's there because there's a million people there. And, yeah. uh, they didn't have that much of an atmosphere, and, and I was riding for her for the first race. And I, I can't remember, I, the one jockey here like that, we were having a chit chat about the usual thing, you know, cars and, uh, and women and things. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I glanced up, and there she was. And I kind of froze, and I, I forgot all my lines. I went, how are you? And she looks at me, she opened her arms, a little handbag, she said, I'm still here. I went, oh my God, at that minute, boom, I got a kick in the shim, I look an hour. Now I'm <laughs> limping away to get on the horse. So that was my first encounter with the Queen. And uh, yeah, it, didn't, it started well, but didn't end very well. And obviously, one of my proudest moments is to win uh, the Ribosdale on Phantom Gold for the Queen of Royal Asker. So there was a big plus in my uh, Royal Asker career. Phantom Gold just about the leader as they come down towards the furlong pole. Chalancia spins 
whips to the outside. To Lanzia under Michael Canan coming to challenge Phantom Gold. It's Phantom Gold of Lanzia as they race up towards the line. The hats go in the air, and it's a royal triumph. And Phantom Gold has won it from Lanzia. The first couple of days were very long for me. All the boys been uh, giving me a lot of stick. My lip was getting bigger and bigger, but uh, <laughs> at the end I pulled one, and uh, I'm delighted. Early on, it was the old way yes, room. The, the trees in the paddock right. and it, it was on that slight slope and now we have the new spectacular yeah. grandstand. But the feel is always the same each year. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a great thrill when back in the day you had to walk through the crowd. You know, and uh, you know, people were touching you, wishing you luck. Yeah, I mean, we don't get that anymore, but things work a lot better now with the new paddock because it's very close to the, to the weigh room, the jockey's room. You know, my heart comes out only for five days a year gets all polished and ready to go, and uh, I like it, I like it, it's part of tradition. That's why Royal Asco is so unique. Even people that don't know anything about racing, they know about Royal Asco, because the tradition of dressing up, and this is what it's all about. That's definitely not a racehorse. <laughs> He's a big yeah. boy, though. Look at the size of his feet. I tell you, if you stand on your toes, you'll know about it. <laughs> Nowadays, this and I'm one of the oldest ones, so I'm sitting there at the bottom of the jockey's room and 30 years have gone. I mean, I'm just sitting there thinking, I feel like I just started yesterday. And the Wayne room, you said you're around this corner. So basically, it's like an L shape, right? You start at the top as an apprentice and you move your way up. And then you get to the end, that's where I am at the moment, the end, because I'm next to the door. Because that means when you're retired, you're out. So I've been clinging on to that door for the last 10 years like this. <laughs> but unfortunately this year, I'm gonna step out. Frankie dominated Royal Ascot in the late 90s, winning 15 races across three years and being crowned leading rider each time, including a memorable victory on Cave Tara to take the Gold Cup in 1998. Royal Ascot was fast becoming the Frankie de Tory show. Cave Tara strikes the lead, double triggers fighting back, they race towards the line, but Cave Tara's gonna win the Gold Cup. Look at Frankie de Tory's face there. He is so thrilled because this is the big race and the jockeys want to win, and he really is absolutely chuffed a bit. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it all there. <laughs> Well, Frankie de Tori has joined me now, having won the Gold Cup. Frankie, you got it just right. I think I get to like Ascot, you know, I think we should just cancel the it, rest of England. It is and just definitely your favourite race course, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a fantastic week. I mean, all the horses have been running out of their skin. When you hit that winning post, it's a great joy. Actually, this is the dog sofa. <laughs> Chili, please stop. Come on, Chili. I'll stay out there now for a while. We might get some peace and quiet now. Of course, I like to say that I ride Royal Ascot very well, but it's not different than I'm riding Ascot than a normal. I, 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 think, I think you're absolutely full of it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. On a wet Monday at Red oh, Car, yeah, yeah. you're useless, Absol right? But useless, I yeah. think you're really good if it's raining <laughs> a little bit at Ascot. Huh? The atmosphere, the big occasion, I'm sure that it works for every sportsman when it comes to a big day, you know. Yeah. And everyone wants to be there for the flying dismount? Yeah, I mean, it all started basically in America in 94 after Baratheia. Took it back to England, did not go down very well for a while. And then people started liking it. I carried on and now I'm slave of my own thing because if I don't do it, they boo. Ascot is quite easy for me because it's nice, soft grass, but sometimes I have to do it on concrete. It's not good for my ankles and knees, but it's, look, it's a bit of fun. I mean, I stole it from Angel Cordero, really, and all those years later, I'm still doing it. And you come back in on any winner at the Royal Meeting. Oh, yes. You got Even to... the Queen Alexandra, the two mile six, I'm still going to do it, 100%. Go on, Frankie. The tough times as well, obviously, yep. you know, the crash just down the, the yep. road from here. The plane took off from the grass strip at Newmarket and seconds later came down. Eyewitnesses said it cartwheeled. The pilot was trapped and died. Dettori and Cochrane somehow scrambled free. That was 1st of June. It was two weeks before Ascot. I did a week in hospital with Ray Cochrane. He was in the plane crash with me. You know, you're full of morphine, you don't see anyone. and. You know, and then when I came out of hospital, then I realized, oh my God, you know, what I went through. And 
I was sitting at home. I watched the Epsom Derby. I was depressed, you know, the shock. I had to cast my leg because I broke my ankle. And uh, I said, let's say I'm getting up and doing something. So I humbled my way to watch Dubai Millennium win. You know, I had crutches, and I remember humbling towards the paddock, and everybody was started clapping in the paddock, and I thought, God, the Queen must be here. So I got myself out of the way, and I actually looked around, they were all clapping through me. Uh, so that was a, was a good touch, and then Dubai Millennium absolutely shoot, shoot in, and uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good day. He's got six or seven lengths in front. It's Dubai Millennium, Jerry Bailey, who goes on to win the Prince of Wales Estates by six or seven lengths. You can hear the cheers there. I should think it was a standing ovation, wasn't it? I think most of it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping up and down. You'll be very, very excited about getting back on him, won't you? Because yeah, you're real spurs exactly. I'll have to get back on it because uh, I think uh, even Willie Kim will ride that one. I'm sure that he'll probably get out, <laughs> probably get out of retirement to ride that one. <laughs> That'll get better very quickly yeah, now after I, watching that. I already designed a bigger iron so I can put my foot in with the cast. <laughs> It was one way to, to get myself out and about and restart my rehabilitation to get back as soon as I could. Ray pulled you out of the plane. Yes, sir. Um, and then that relationship, which was already strong anyway, grew from there. Unfortunately, our pilot, Patrick, died. And I had a broken leg. He managed to drive me out of the wreckage and the plane exploded. So I was lucky twice all my life to Ray. He sustained severe neck injuries three-degree burns in his face and his hands because he's tried to go back to get the pilot out. And they kind of was told by the doctors that, you know, he, you know, if he would have took another by fall, he could end up in a wheelchair. So at that point, I reached out to him. I said, listen, I'd, why don't you pack it in and you become an agent? You know, it's another person in my life that's been so important. And, you know, we started with a bang. You know, I think when the Prince of Wales on the second day, fantastic light, and what a horse he was. Yeah. He was a good horse. He was a bit quirky, I must say. He had these bad days, but in general, when he was good, he was really good. Another victory here for the tactics of Godolphin. As Willie said beforehand, give the slip would take the sting out of the rest. And my word, this horse does finish a race well. Oh, they've got it right again. This horse has put a stamp on his superiority even over a mile and a quarter. The boys in blue, the Godolphin team, it's been a massive part of your career and the, the leading rider at the Royal Meeting yeah. as well. You know, all the time you're going up there, obviously you're riding for everybody, mm -hmm. but it was in the in the blue silks that were dominant. You can ask anyone, you know, to be, you know, leading rider at Royal Ascot is, is a great honour and I think I managed it to win about five, five or six times. To be leading rider at Ascot, you need to have the good horses in the big races, you need to have good two-year-olds, you need to have the spectrum of everything. You, know, you can't just go there with two good ones in the big races because that's not good enough. You need, you need, and, and we had a lot of firepower. We had runners, I yeah. said we, Godolphin, in almost every race. Those horses, they get you out of trouble. They put you in a good spot. So it makes my life easier. Yes, Ooster, daddy, we done it, mommy. This can go straight in the cabinet, the gold cup, straight oh, to there on the isn't top. Isn't it Look. small? That's all right, I don't smoke, so, so I'm all right. You're starting to uh, be a gold cup specialist. Yeah, well, I've had a few now. What is it, three? Four. Four gold cups, yeah. Nowadays, they give us something smart like this. The queen, when she was still alive, she gave the trophies when you won the gold cup and when they won the Queen Elizabeth uh, race. So I was lucky enough that I won eight gold cups. It's probably the most prestigious, the most followed by people who don't even watch race. It's the busiest day, the Queen gives you the trophy. Can't get any better than that. How do you feel about that when you look at it now? I'm not never kind of been a material person. Okay, it's a nice object to have, but it's the memories, the winning, the competition. I usually get one of these, I'll take it home, I'll put it there, I'll forget about it. And to me, it's just, I'm, I'm looking for the next buzz. I'm looking for the next big win. That's the best winner. Yeah. Catherine. This is when we got married, look at that, how young we were. We've been together 26 years, five children, I put her through hell, thick and thin, winning and losing, plane crashes. Everyone, you need somebody strong behind them, and she's definitely so strong with me. One of my best Christmas presents was this, Jason. Oh. Fuji's foot made of bronze. 
He was the worst, what made me famous, the seventh winner. You've got to just go through each of those. Which ones should have, <laughs> which ones shouldn't have won? Go down. Uh, certainty shouldn't have won. Good chance. Looking back, this was a shoe in as well. I don't remember this at all. I beat Ray Cochran. Really? Was it blur? So much excitement, then that's a blank. Uh, I remember this because this was uh, equal in the record, six. And then obviously, great for Gemma Crest, smashed the record seven. It was a freak thing. I didn't know how it did happen, but it did. So you think in rewilding, one of the proper battles that people remember it. Yeah. So you think came from Australia with this massive reputation and the same old rivalry, Coolmore and Godolphin, the two best horses. And we locked horns. It was one of those epic races that I'm always very happy to rewatch it because I know I've won. Here's So You Think putting in giant strides. He's got him in a, a bound on the outside. So You Think has raced to the lead. They straighten up for home. The Aussie superstar goes three lengths in front. Twice over out after him. Planteur out wider on the track. Rewilding is running on. Moore's reached for the whip. He gives him a slap. He's gone three in front now. It's So You Think in front. Rewilding is now starting the motor home down the outside. A furlong left to go. So you think, a length and a half in front, all the time rewilding, is wearing him down with every stride. So you think is digging deep, rewilding on the outside. He's grabbed him close home, rewilding has got up. It's an upset, rewilding wins the Prince of Wales estate. It is a rivalry, it means a lot, you know, for both camps, so it was a one-up for us. That's something as well, isn't it? Because you've built yourself yeah. up for that. I mean, imagine, you know, it's day, it's day two of Asco, if that would have gone the other way, I would have been down in the dumps for, you know, for the, the next of the week. You can be like that but as a temperament. Everybody says that. <laughs> I mean, and I what do you think? I don't see it, but I'm, I'm okay. sure I'm not... Don't, don't be right. too touchy about... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Yeah. You no? know, I am, like they say, when I'm on a roll, I'm on a roll, but when I'm down, I'm down. But I feel that I'm really safe. <laughs> and everybody around you at the race course is going, oh, he's in a mood today. Yeah, you know, no. <laughs> we talked about ups and downs or whatever. There was a, an obvious down with the ban. Yeah, I missed six months in the winter when I failed the drug test. Then I came back uh, in 2013. Obviously, I have to start from scratch, it was a bit hard to get good rides. I left Godolphin. Did it feel that everything was against you? You know, you had your back against the wall again. Yeah, I was surprised that uh, it took me so long to actually find the rhythm. People were, were too afraid to put me up. It took a while to get back into the system, I'll be honest with you, and, and it was tough. And Sheik Joan, I go a lot to him. He played a big part of my comeback because, you know, I, I had no job. They were fairly unknown by then, but they got to known very quickly, I shook up, so yeah. they, they really gave me a good boost and a good lift. Galileo Gold in front, Ortar the Gurkha in second and third places, but it's Galileo Gold and Frankie have won the St. James's Palace. The Godolphin and Al Shakab partnerships brought plenty of memorable winners, but Frankie's link up with Wesley Ward produced some of the most iconic performances we've ever seen at the Royal Meeting. The sort of international flavour at the Royal Meeting, Wesley and the team have added to that. Yeah, I got to speak to Wes, we got on with each other, and then on drafted I won the Jubilee, and then obviously the likes of uh, Lady Aurelia, what I would say was probably the most impressive two-year-old win that I ever had the Royal Ascot, or we probably ever seen. She was a rocket. And there are Lazy or really are blasting away the yellow jacket. Those American horses, their ability to get into top gear so oh, quickly. So fast. so fast, completely di different training. They run five furlongs around the turn. Ascot is five furlongs straight. It's a completely different ball game. You just have to try to nurse their speed because you know, if you let them zip, they only go to halfway. You get taught in America to grab the main and let the horse do the do jumping off and just have one hold because as you go for another grip, they think it's time to go and they're gonna hit fifth gear and they're gonna burn themselves out. Is very attempted to go for the second grip, and, and, then, and then you're gone. 
Frankie says go on the American filly, and she absolutely blasts away from them. Lady Aurelia is absolutely home and hosed here, seven or eight lengths in front. She's as good as a reputation shed she might be, and Wesley Ward is going to have his seventh winner at Royal Ascot, and Frankie de Tori salutes the crowd. A devastating win. 77 Royal Ascot winners and counting makes Frankie second only to the late, great Lester Piggott as Royal Ascot's all-time winning rider. He overtook the jockey affectionately referred to as God, Pat Eddery, to move into second place in 2021. When you're getting up to the level of passing Pat, when you've been following him yes. for all those years... Good satisfaction. Yeah, b b great honour. We always looked up to Pat. You know, we were next to me in the jockey room. Gentleman, fierce competitor. Yeah, it was a big moment in the Queen Anne. Palace Pier and Frankie de Tori have the advantage. He was uh, a show fear, he was the banker of, of the meat for me and, and he fully obliged. It's a two length lead for Palace Pier, races the ward to line and Palace Pier is the winner of the Queen Anne. For Frankie, a seventh win in the race that he first won in 1990. 74 Royal Ascot winners at the young age of 50. I won't be second for long because I got uh, Ryan breathing down my neck. But uh, if I can hold him up till this year, I can see I retired, I was still second. I mean, last year was tough. Obviously, Stradivarius didn't go down well. I couldn't take the hood off Lord North. I got beat for the Queen uh, ahead. But luckily, Spiral saved me. Inside the two, Cache, challenged now by Spenderella, the hoop sleeves, here's Discoveries, and now in Spiral finds daylight. She begins to run off very strongly down the centre onto the Tadori Drive, and in Spiral has come sweeping through to snatch the lead deep inside the furlong. Redemption day for Frankie. In Spiral, powering clear. In Spiral, inspired, wins the coronation stakes, and Frankie salutes the crowd. That was a tough one, but then some years you have some real good results. So, especially the year then I won four in the day, and then uh, I nearly won the fifth as well. And and I thought the grandstand was going to fall I, down. I was in the paddock <laughs> that day. The crackle is the only way I can describe yeah. it around the crowd as you're it's going down the, for yeah. number five. It yeah. was electric. It was nearly as good as when I won the seven, the feeling. I mean, I was on cloud nine. Once the crowds get behind me, then I, I can turn it up. And it was electric, electric, I must say. It was uh, one of those days Then I will never forget. But you've also been successful when there were no crowd through COVID. Yeah, and... well, it was very sad, really, uh, in a way. I mean, luckily then we still race, but you know, to win a Gold Cup by 10 lengths with Stradivarius, nobody there. I think uh, I was cheated of a good uh, cheer, right? What a great horse with a turn of foot, especially around Ascot. A push button, I mean, what a horse. Again, on COVID, I landed on Alpine Star for Jessica and the Niakos family. You know, she came into the race, you know, under the radar a little bit. But uh, I had a good draw, and Jessica being a brilliant trainer, she gave me lots of confidence, and and that was it. You know, that was the full house. Now, you know, I've won all the big races at Royal Ascot. I can retire with uh, satisfaction, and I, I I've conquered all of them. Frankie riles both people in the crowd to get them going. We'll give you a cheer, Frankie. Walking in now. Yes. Walking in now, I can feel it, you know, it's not going to be easy. Royal Ascot is the best we can offer. It's our Olympics. It's five days of the best thoroughbreds, the best track. It means the world. I mean, you start off the season thinking, you know, what we're going to aim for Royal Ascot, because that's all the owners want. That's what the public wants, and that's what we want. I've loved it, every second of it. It's going to be... Yeah, pretty emotional. I think that's the biggest understatement of them all. I think it'd be overwhelming. Don't know, I'll let you know. You know, it's very hard to let go, Jason, when you've been doing this for 30 odd years. You know, it's your life, you know, so it's, I have to change life, so I have to pre prepare myself for it. Mm -hmm.